Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, quick announcement before we hop into the video. You guys have been requesting it and requesting it and asking and asking. So here it is. We gave you, or we are giving you right now, a free, F R E E, free 99 program, strength and hypertrophy repeating four week program by Kaizen is now available completely free. All you have to do is click the link in the description, sign up costs you zero. It gives you a basic outline of four weeks that you will have an Excel and you can plug and play and it will be infinite. You can repeat it over and over and over. We also have a couple paragraphs, a small, tiny ebook type deal to teach you how to customize it and how to work it, mold it for yourself, your goals, your training. Uh, it's a great off season program. It's a great general strength program. It's a great hypertrophy program. Whatever you guys want to use it for, you will be able to customize it for. So it is free. Grab it right now. Give it a thumbs up. Enjoy the video. Classic with diamond stud earrings from $150 to over $25,000. Good morning. We got the old car back. People are excited. The internet's excited. They don't know about the new car. That's why. No. Haven't been lifting weights. Hip, quad issue. I think we talked about it a bit. So, a uh, little bit of bodybuilding. I got the... I got the jewels and the diamonds But when I open my eyes I can never find them, no Coming back from Toronto, my body weight was 215 This week we're down to about a 212 average So we're trending in the right direction, slow progress but progress nonetheless Kind of on an upper lower split right now where um, I'm having Bart help me out Just write some general kind of rehabby things, general strength stuff since I was just feeling beat up, feeling very weak um, so from going six days a week, three days of weightlifting, three days of powerlifting, I'm now back down to four days. You like these shorts? Oh, wow. Internationally known, bro. The trick is to train delts five times a week. No chest, no arms. And then everyone thinks I'm on drugs. And then you get all the sponsorships and all the bitches. Alan Thrall and all his strength training. Horseshit. Energy's still low. That's all we got. We're gonna do that. And then go home and nap the rest of the day. I'm gonna go watch Icarus or Icarus. Candy creatine. And it's literally like a, it's like a sweet tart type candy. Um, this is non-endorsement. Unless they wanna send me some creatine candy. Uh, and it's like two grams of creatine. So you just grab a handful on the way out. You're the kid? Dude, it's delicious. It doesn't sound good. It's delicious. You know, sweet tarts. Have you ever had unflavored creatine though? It's the yeah. worst thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, what makes you think I've never had any creatine? That was a rude ass <laughs> comment. Is it open? No, too late. Sold out? Baker's Donuts it is. Fucking cow. We had our first pile of meat, I like made it for her. Fucking cow, bro. When do I get my own donut? <laughs> What do you want on it if you, if you had a, your own donut? What about a cinnamon butterfinger cronut? Because I like cinnamon rolls too. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. That, that cinnamon roll's staring me in the eye. Steroid. Yeah, told you. Icarus, son of Daedalus, who dared to fly too near to the sun on wings of feathers and wax. That's who Icarus is. Just watch the movie. Icarus, the documentary, uh, when filmmaker Brian Fogel sets out on to uncover the truth about doping in sports, a chance uh, with meeting with a Russian scientist transforms the story from a personal experiment into a geopolitical thriller. I knew the movie was about steroids, I knew it was about Russia, uh, and the movie started out uh, a little bit more in the meathead realm, where this uh, cyclist, ex-pro cyclist, Ryan Fogel, it sounded like he was really good in his early 20s, got in a bad wreck. Took some years off, he was trying to come back into the pro circuit. Uh, finished 14th or something at a big race. I don't think it was Tour de France, but it was a big race. Um, and then he decided to uh, film himself with really high quality, well shot uh, shit, uh, taking his first cycle. And I forgot the connection, but one of his friends uh, knew of a uh, Russian steroid guru. And this Russian steroid guru ended up being the Rusada director. So the WADA representative director of Russia, anti-doping, um, but he knew a lot about drugs. In fitness, I think it's like, maybe not well known, but it's like kind of a common stereotype to uh, joke about Russians and drugs and whatever. 
Um, then the whole Lance Armstrong, so you joke about uh, even Americans and drugs or cycling and drugs. So the movie began with Brian Fogel literally taking his first cycle on camera um, with help of a doctor, an American doctor, and this Russian uh, Rusada uh, director, um, helping him uh, to potentially pass the test that he'll go under. Uh, he ended up doing poorly in the uh, race. He, he finished like 24th or something. He had some gear problems on one day. Uh, gear, not as in drugs, but gear as in gears of his bike. And um, whatever, he did poorly, which doesn't surprise me because Lance Armstrong, if you guys have seen Armstrong Lies, uh, if you haven't, I suggest it was a great documentary. Uh, he basically talks about you know his mentality that everybody's on uh, these enhancing drugs, performance enhancing drugs. So for him, it, it wasn't cheating by any means because he already was dead in his ways, convinced that everybody else was. And obviously that could be true, that could be false, what do we know? Uh, but this movie ends up going down a deep dark hole and basically going into more uh, political stuff about WADA and uh, the Russians having a doping process, doping um, team to help the, their Olympians and their athletes do better uh, at international contests, which I guess is semi-proven to be true in Russia, but it's just so possible to be done anywhere else and on different levels of different sports. Um, because the director, you know, WADA has these directors in each country and they're normally from their own country. So I'm sure the director of USADA, which is the United States Anti-Doping uh, Administration, is probably an American. And so then there lies kind of a moral uh, issue where I don't know that person by any means, so I'm just hypothetical here, but if they are so patriotic and so pro-America and they have, you know, gray feelings on steroids or performance enhancing and drugs, then maybe, you know, potentially they could let things slip on purpose so their country can perform and do better at international um, sport. And all of this, uh, I was talking, you know, just rambling as I do, it, it is a kind of a, a culmination and in, in, in a comparison to war and countries and otherwise we wouldn't be taking this sport so damn serious because uh, at the end of the day, it is just a game. I've heard, you know, winning a gold medal, you only win a couple thousand dollars and you literally get a gold medal, which is an insane honor and it literally does prove that you're the best at what you do in your sport and I have crazy respect for that uh, as an athlete as a coach but um, you know when you break it down it is just a game and to bring so much politics and so much uh, danger you know this this guy I don't want to you know here's the spoiler alert Connor throw up a big spoiler alert for the movie that you know he ends up having to go under witness protection because he flees Russia uh, because he basically tells the story of them doping up their athletes and uh, you know, and then he talks about how he was double thinking, I think is the phrase he used, where he is in charge of anti-doping for Russia, and he's also in charge of doping for Russia, which is uh, a fuck of a conundrum to be in. Uh, but I did find it very interesting. And within this last week, uh, again, don't quote me, it was just one statement uh, by a USAPL um, executive mentioned that uh, they're in danger of being banned for a year or two in the IPF uh, because too many um, USAPL lifters had been pest, uh, tested positive for a banned substance at an international competition. And uh, I did a little bit of research, uh, most of the stuff you can find, who has been banned and what have they been banned for, what substance and how long and at what competition, both in the USAPL and the IPF. Uh, and it did seem in 2017, the latest report I saw, maybe there's more coming because they do update it every quarter or so, that there was three positive tests, maybe a lot, a Latvian gentlemen, and then two athletes from America. So, you know, being two thirds of the people that tested positive in the international level isn't a great ratio for America. And it's just, it's just hard because then again, that, that, we don't, so they're not in charge of the test at the international level, and that's what the movie was basically about, is that uh, the Sochi Olympics and other Olympics, the WADA, all these directors of the countries themselves come together and run the tests at the um, official WADA Olympics. So uh, at the Sochi Olympics in particular, uh, in Russia, 
the this director uh, had more control and more power to manipulate the tests. I don't believe that's the same as the USAPL to the IPF. So does that mean that um, more USAPL guys are just taking more banned substances, whether it be some type of steroid, stimulant, whatever? Or does it mean that whoever's testing our USAPL lifters is not uh, is letting them through with those performance enhancing uh, things and we're being more loose on this level and then they're getting caught on this level? I don't know. I don't know the truth. I don't know the ins and outs of the testing uh, on either level, to be honest. I know some of the basic rules of local meets, you know, five, five or ten percent of people are getting tested at our uh, national meet you know, 10% are getting tested plus the winners or the top podiums of each weight class. And I think every country has their own rule for that and how they regulate. Um, but there's always cracks to go through. And when you have a governing body that has um, potential interest uh, in different people winning or um, different countries winning, you're always going to have conflict. And the conflict of interest is um, where some of these inner workings happen with the Russia story. So it was a really good movie. I do suggest it. You know me, I'm not pro steroids. I'm not against steroids, but if you're using a performance enhancing drug and competing in a tested federation, I do think you're cheating. There's other ways, other sports. Instagram's a great competition for you, whatever it might be to break your own world records or whatever sport it may be. Um, but it is a interesting topic even on the surface of just competition and performance enhancing drugs and how much it helps. Like this guy, Brian Fogel in the movie who did worse, although he was on his first cycle of, I think HGH and some tests, um, which is a whole kind of performance conversation, let alone the political and the actual testing side, the logistics of it, uh, I find equally as interesting. And so that's why I really did like this movie because it took a twist that I wasn't really used to. Uh, go watch the movie. Leave your comments below. Tell me what you think. Give it a thumbs up for Icarus and who you think Icarus is. I had to inform the world from my art school days. Thoughts of the day, steroids, politics. Go get jacked, my friends. I'm out of here. What's up, guys? Quick announcement. I will be coming to New York City. August 31st, a meet and greet Q&A. Lift some weights at Solace Gym, which is dead middle of Manhattan. Uh, 7 p.m. again on August 31st. If you want to RSVP, it's totally free. All you have to do is email info at newyorksolace.com. So to RSVP, it's just info at solacenewyork.com. Let them know you're coming. I'll see you guys there. August 31st, 7 p.m. See you guys there.